Hello, today we're going to cover Chapter 5 of Intermediate Algebra over factoring. So when we left off on Chapter 4, we were undoing the factoring. This last section was all about boiling the stuff together. So we talked about how we had to go first, outer, inner, last, even when there was more than two by two, and the acronym FOIL didn't really work. We also saw this special case where we had the first guys matching, the back guys matching, and the opposite signs in the middle, these two middle terms ended up canceling and we had what we called the difference of squares. So we ended up with the front guy squared and the back guy squared with a minus in between. Now it's always the minus because when we had this one plus one minus, a positive times a negative is a negative. So it only works out with this difference of squares. So that's important as we learn our factoring going the other way. We're trying to break things back apart. So it kind of comes down into three general cases. You can either have two terms, three terms, or four terms. Now, no matter how many terms you have, you should always check for GCF, the greatest common factor. If there's something that all of the terms have in common, try to get that out of your way. It makes the whole rest of it easier. So greatest common factor is always your first step, no matter what. So after you've kind of seen if there was any GCF to pull out, we look at those three cases, two, three, or four terms. The two terms always break down in one of two ways. So here's some two term examples all on the slide here. It always comes out to be one of those cases of that difference of squares, where we know that if it was a perfect square, a minus and a perfect square, then it must have been these two things foiled together with the matching front guys, the matching back guys, and one plus and one minus. Or it may just have been a GCF and that's all, but it might have been both. So let's look at some examples. So real quick, just so it's on the same page, let's practice foiling this difference of squares back together, just to remind ourselves where this came from. So if I foiled this, I would have gotten a times a is a squared. a times the negative b would have been minus ab. Positive b times positive a would be positive ab. And then last, positive b times negative b always comes out to be negative b squared always negative, which means these middle terms cancel just like we saw in the chapter four notes, giving us that difference of squares. Always a difference. So just a heads up, if you ever see the sum of squares, it doesn't work out. You can't break up because there's no way that I could foil something together with a positive times a positive and get this middle terms matching. There's just no way it works out. So it's always the difference of squares, never the sum. So just a heads up. All right, let's give it a try. So I look for a GCF. Sure enough, both of these numbers are divisible by four. And both of these two terms have at least two x's. That's the, what the biggest thing that they have in common. So when I'm pulling out that GCF, it's the opposite of distributing. So when we were distributing, we were multiplying. When we're factoring out, we are dividing, dividing it back out of. So we said they were both divisible by the number four and they both had at least two x's. So I'm gonna take that out of each of these two terms. Once it's taken out, it's not completely gone. It didn't just magically disappear. It is now factored out over here to the side. So in this term, four divided by four would just be one. X cubed divided by x squared would be x, would just be one x. On this term, the 12 divided by 4 would be a positive 3. The x squared and x squared would cancel, so that would be it. And that is as far as you can go. This is now its fully factored form. We are not asked to solve it. We don't know what it's equal to. We're just breaking it up. So this right here, if I wanted to double check my answer, I could distribute and make sure that distribution gets me right back where I started. 4x squared times x would be 4x cubed. 4x squared times 3, 4 times 3 would be 12x squared, so that checks out. So it's, it's generally easier to foil things together to distribute than it is to factor them apart. So especially on the test, those big tests that really count the midterm and the final, stop, take the time, foil it back together, check your work. It takes like five seconds and it can save you some points on the test. So don't get in a hurry, check your work. This one right here, I look for my GCF, and I see there's not anything they have in common. This, of course, is only letters, and this is only numbers, so there's nothing I could pull out of both of them, nothing that matches. 
So instead I think, okay, it must be the two term case of the difference of squares. There was no GCF, it does have two terms. So it was only gonna be GCF or difference of squares. Since it's the difference of squares, I think the front guy must have been a T. T squared is of course T squared. The back guy, I have to think what squared made 64. If I needed to, I could use my calculator and take the square root and find that that would be an eight. But like I said, it's handy to have those perfect squares memorized for a case like this. And then remember that it has to have the opposite sides, one plus one minus. Doesn't really matter which one is which. You could put the minus in front or the plus in front and it would work itself out. Now remember, you could take the time and foil this out. So I would go t times t is t squared. And this is the answer. t times negative eight would be minus eight t. Positive eight times t would be positive eight t. And last times last, positive eight times negative eight would be negative 64. So it works out. So this is the answer. This was me checking the answer. Okay, let's try some more. This one has the two terms. I always check for GCF first. It kind of seemed like we might get one, but there's no numbers in common, so no GCF. So then I think, okay, is it perfect squares? Sure enough, it is. And let's kind of focus on those squares this time. What squared makes four? That would be a two. And then of course we have the B. So it'd be 2b squared, or not 2b squared, that's the question. And then 25 is, of course, 5 squared. So it's the difference of 2b squared and 5 squared. That means my front number guy is going to be the 2b. And the back number guy is going to be the 5 with 1 plus and 1 minus. And that's it. And foil it together to double check. That is your answer. Difference of squares. Now this one right here, I've got a whole bunch going on, but luckily once I pull out GCF, it kind of cleans itself up. So at first I look at these numbers and they do have a number in common, but it might be a little bit harder to see. The, one, the thing I would do with trickier numbers is I would just kind of pull out the calculator and start dividing if I needed to. I would know that 12 is 2 times 6 and 3 times 4, which means those are the only numbers I'm looking for that could be divided. So if I look through 75 to see if it's divisible by 2, 6, 3, or 4, the only one is going to be that 3. So I can divide both of these evenly by the number 3. I also see that both of these share at least one letter A. And that's all the letters they have in common. So I'm going to pull out that three that they share in common and that single letter A that they have in common. So then I clean up what's left. Once I pull that out, remember I'm dividing. 12 divided by three is four. I had three A's, but I pulled one out, leaving two. 75 divided by three is 25. There was one A pulled out, leaving just the squared B. But wait, we're not quite done. Notice I still have some big things going on here, some squares, so I wanna see if I can break it down anymore. When you have it down to single letters, you know it's fully broken down. But this one I've got exponents, so I need to be careful. And sure enough, right here, just like our last one, four A squared is a perfect square, 25 B squared is a perfect square. So I'm going to go one step farther and break this apart into that difference of squares. So that would be the 2a as the front guy, the 5b as the back guy, with 1 plus and 1 minus. And that is the fully factored form. If you stopped right here, you would not get full credit because it was not fully factored. That's our goal, fully factored. Okay, now this one here, it's got a lot going on. Just take it step at a time. These are both divisible by the number four. 16, it's divisible by four itself. And as we had to search a little bit, hopefully you've got your numbers down enough that you can see the four in common. 
Next, I see that they both have at least one letter X. Kind of looks like the last one. Pull that four X out. That's gonna leave us with an X squared. 16 divided by four is four, and it leaves the Y squared. Now, just like the last one, I do have some squares here, so I wanna see if I can break it down, but this last one in red had a minus, this one has a plus. You cannot break apart the sum of squares. This is as far as I can go in this problem. It cannot be broken down anymore because you cannot, you cannot factor the sum of squares. Okay, so this one, I've just got an x squared and a 25. So we know x squared is, of course, x squared. 25 is 5 squared. My front guy is the x, my back guy is the 5, 1 plus 1 minus. This answer and this answer would be equally true and valid as long as you have one of each. Now, if you put both of them as the minus or both as the plus, then you would not get the right answer. But either of these is equally true. And then last, this one right here, if it asks you to fully factor with this plus sign in the middle, that's the answer, it does not factor. Now, does not factor is an extra option at the bottom of the problems, but it is a rare case. Don't select it for every problem you get stuck on. It is a very rare case. It's reserved for things like this where you have the sum of squares or there are occasionally trinomials that won't factor, but they're not going to give you many of those because the goal of this lesson is factoring. So don't just choose that for every answer. It's very rare. So next, let's step up into the four terms. Now, it might seem like we skipped the three, but four is actually the next easiest because factoring four-term polynomials is really the same as factoring the two-term polynomials twice. We just kind of do it twice. So in this one right here, of course, I have those four terms. I'm going to kind of factor by grouping. Now, be careful. That means I'm going to look at this group and this group, but don't do this. Okay, I have people do that. It makes me mad. Don't be that guy, okay? So the reason I don't like that is because, one, it makes it look like you factored and you think you're done. You're not. And, two, if you had something like this problem right here, it might make you accidentally think this sign in the middle was a plus when really it was a minus. So don't do that. Don't do those parentheses. If you want to show your groups to your, to your eyeballs, to your mind, if anything, underline them like this. Do not put those parentheses like that. It will make me mad. Don't do it. It'll mess you up and it'll make me mad. All right, so instead, let's do it the underlying way. I put an underline and I pretend like it's two little two-term problems like we were just working on on the last slide. So looking just at these two, pretending this doesn't exist back here, I see that they don't have any numbers in common, but they are both divisible by an x. They both have x's. In fact, they both have at least two x's. So I'm going to take two x's out of each of these. That would give me three with one x left minus two. Okay, on this one, they're both divisible by the number four. Okay, now on this one, we always match the middle sign here. So I'm going to factor out not just four, but a negative four because of this sign right here. I always match it. So when I'm factoring out that negative four, be careful. Negative divided by negative on this one becomes a positive three. Right here, this positive eight divided by negative four becomes a negative two. And now you may notice these matching right here. And that's the trick. So really I have x squared times stuff minus four times the same stuff. Both of these terms, here's one big messy term separated by a plus or minus sign from the other big messy term, have the same stuff involved. So it'd be kind of like if I told you you had x squared w minus 4w. These both have a w, which means the w could be factored out. And I'm going to do just that. So I'm going to factor out 
for 3x minus 2, which from this first big messy term would leave an x squared. From the second big messy term, it would leave the minus 4. So from here, a lot of people say, why don't we have another 3x minus 2? But remember, we factored it out, just like if I'd factored out a w. Okay, we didn't have 2x squared, so we had the 1x squared that we factored out. We didn't have two negative fours, we had the one negative four that we factored out. That could be distributed back in. It could distribute this big messy stuff to the x squared and the minus four. Now on this one, this is a special problem that has one more step. Usually you're done right here, but look back here, here's that higher power that we gotta keep an eye on. And sure enough, it's another one of those difference of squares. So our final fully factored form would be the 3x minus 2. And then this part right here would break into that difference of squares with an x in the front, a 2 in the back, the 1 plus, and 1 minus. That's one of the tricky ones because they snuck an extra factor in on you there. Just be careful. Okay, so let's try an easier four term. So this one right here has those four terms. Remember, always check for GCF. I forgot to talk about that. But there was nothing that all four of these were divisible by. Same on this. The first three have an X, but the last one doesn't. The last three have an A, but the first one doesn't. So there's nothing all three of them have in common. So I'm going to look at just the front two. They both share a letter X. So I'm going to factor out that X. It gives me an x minus 3a. The second two here are both divisible by the number 2. And remember, I'm going to match this sign. So this time I'm factoring out a positive 2. Okay, I need to put the sign right there. Don't just put 2, you need a positive. And luckily, that gives me the same x minus 3a. If you reach this step and they don't match, double check your work. Especially a lot of times right here, you'll miss this sign on a case like this right here because you'll forget to distribute the negative. So if they're almost matching but the sign is wrong, check this step right here. You might have forgotten that you were dividing the negative. So once you get these matching, we can do this W trick right here. I'm going to factor out the X minus 3A that matches from both of those big messy terms, leaving the X from the front guy here and the positive two from the back guy. Big messy term, big messy term, x plus two. This one is done, there are no higher powers, so nothing else can be factored. Okay, now those three terms, those are the sneakiest ones. And the reason that they're sneaky is because when we were putting things together, we had this right here happen, these two terms in the middle combined. 32 and 10 made 42. So when we're asked to factor a three-term polynomial like this right here, we have to try to think our way backwards into what might have combined, added and subtracted together to make the middle number 42. So because of that, we have an extra dose of tricky. And that's why I saved the best for last there. So for me, it kind of helps to line out my thoughts in a box just like I made right here. So when I was foiling them together, I made out my 4x and the 2, my 5x and the 8, and then I multiplied together to get these four boxes inside. So let's do that, but backwards. Okay, so I'm going to make my little tic-tac-toe box here. Okay, I'm going to fill in these four right here, and then the answer will be in these four boxes right here. Tic-tac-toe okay, box. This one is always blank. Don't worry about that one. We're looking for these four right here. That'll be my answer. All right. So I know that the first times the first was an x squared. No question. That one's easy. I know that the last times the last was the positive 2. No question. That one's easy. 
It's these two that are sneaky, that I have to think backwards. So I have to think through things that would have multiplied to be two and added to be three. So in this case, that's pretty easy because the only two numbers that multiply to be two are one and two. One times two is two. And luckily, one plus two is three. So that means I would have needed one X and two X. Okay, because one X plus two X is three X. Those are the ones that would have added together to make the three. And those are the ones that multiplied one times two would have given me the last number here of two. Okay, if you're not on board yet, stick with me to the next step and it'll make more sense. Now I'm gonna look across my top, bottom, and my rows. So in my middle column right here, looking right here, I see that the x squared and the 2x have an x in common. My 1x and 2 don't have anything in common, no numbers or anything, so it's just the 1. They're both divisible by the number 1. That's the only thing they have in common. Across my middle row here, x squared and 1x both have an x in common. Across my bottom row, these are both divisible by a positive two. All right, so that means my fully factored form right here would have been x plus one, x plus two. Okay, x plus one right here, and x plus two right here. Because if I boiled this together, I would get x times x is x squared. x times 2 is, of course, 2x. x times 1 is 1x. And 1 times 2 is 2. That's the only thing I could have boiled together to make this right here. 1 plus 2 is 3. And as you get used to these, you, of course, will get faster. It'll make more sense. But these first times, I recommend something like this, like this tic-tac-toe box, especially because as you get into some trickier ones, it really helps line out your thoughts. Remember on the test to check these answers, foil it together, because it's super easy to miss one little sign, get the signs backwards, something like that, and miss the whole problem. So take the time, foil them together, make sure it comes back to what you started with. Okay, let's try it again. So I'm going to make my little tic-tac-toe box here. Okay, remember I never used this corner right here. The middle was the front guy. The bottom right is the back guy, because that was the first one squared and the last one squared. It's these two that are a little bit sneaky. Okay, so I have to try to think through things that would have multiplied to make positive 10 but then added together to make a negative seven. That might seem a little weird, a negative. Well, to make a 10 would of course just be one times 10 or two times five. So I see two and five are my key. That's gonna work out right there, two and five. But to make it be a seven, I would need it to be a negative two and a negative five. Negative times negative would still make the positive 10, but negative two minus another five gives me a negative seven. So those are my keys, negative two x, because it's seven x, and negative five x. Minus two x minus five x is minus seven x. So these four boxes are my original trinomial, x squared minus seven x plus 10. Now I'm gonna look at my rows and columns and see what they have in common. So these two are both divisible by an x. These are both divisible by a two. And this one right here, the closest guy is a negative. So I'm gonna keep his sign right there, the closest one. This one right here, they both again have that x. These two are both divisible by five. And again, the closest box here has the negative. So I'm gonna keep that negative. And there's my answer. So I've got the x minus 2 and the x minus 5. Those are the things that would foil together 
to make this trinomial. Okay, circle them right there just so we see where we got the answer. Now there are of course several different ways to learn factoring and if you like any other way on YouTube or anything I would never count you off for not using the tic-tac-toe box. It's just a good way to get through some of these trickier ones. So I know it seems a little easy right now. You probably noticed that it was these same numbers here and it works in this case, but when they get harder, it's going to be tricky. So stick with me. Keep doing the tic-tac-toes for me for now. Okay, let's tic-tac-toe for this one here. Okay, we never use this box. The middle is the front guy. The back here is the last guy. It's these two that are tricky. Sorry, 24. Got 24. Okay, those are tricky. So let's make our little chart here to make sure we got the right middle numbers. So I've got the negative 24. This one's a little sneakier because lots of things multiply to 24. It could be 1 and 24. It could be 2 and 12. It could be 3 and 8. Or it could be 4 and 6. And now I know I'm done because if I go 5, it's not evenly divisible by 5. The next number up is six, I've already got the six. So that's the way I just kind of count my way up and then I know I have everybody. All right, so I want the things that multiply to a negative 24. Watch that sign, the last two are positives, this one's negative. That means to multiply to a negative needs one positive and one negative. I need one of each. So I need one of each, a positive and a negative, that would combine to make a positive two. So here's my guys, these are two apart, but would it be a negative four and positive six or a positive four and negative six? Well, since the positive number is bigger, this middle number two is bigger, we would want this guy to make the final result of an addition subtraction be positive. The bigger number would need to be the positive. Okay, so here's my numbers, the negative four X and the positive 6x, okay? Because 6 minus 4 is 2. 6x minus 4x is 2x, okay? Now look at your rows and columns. This row is both divisible by x. These are both divisible by a 4, and the closest one here is a negative, so I'm gonna call it a negative 4. These both have an x, and these are both divisible by 6, and the closest one right here is a positive. So closest box is a positive. And there's your answer. So it would be x minus four and x plus six. Now, if you wrote x plus six and then x minus four, that's just as good. Because remember, they're commutative. Those are multiplied. So the order is not important. Okay, let's try these. So this one, I'm gonna make my tic-tac-toe. I never use this box. The middle one is the front. The bottom right is the back. And this one's a little sneaky. The six right here is sneaky. I want things that multiply to a negative six combined to make a negative five. I'm going to put my two right here. Okay. Now we have to be extra careful on the sixes because there's two different ways it could work out if you're not careful. Okay, so the only things that multiply to make a six are one and six and two and three, but these are five apart and these combine to five. You really have to watch the signs. So in order to multiply to a negative, I would need one positive and one negative. So that means if I did a minus two minus three, that would give me a minus five but it would not multiply to make a negative six. Minus times minus would make a positive six. So that one doesn't work. So instead I need the one and the six, but I need to make sure that I have a negative five by putting the negative with the six. Since this is negative, my bigger number needs to be the negative. One minus six is negative five. Okay, all right. So I need a positive 1x, a negative 6x, because negative 6 plus 1 is 5. OK, 
and negative 5. These two both share an x. These don't have any numbers in common, so they only have a 1 in common. The closest one here is positive, so it'd be positive. Middle row has an x in common. Bottom row, they're both divisible by 6. And the last sign right here, the closest one, is a negative. And that's it. So we've got our x plus 1 and our x minus 6. So watch those sixes. They try to trick you. All right. And this last one, it looks like we're stepping up into the next level of difficulty, but wait. Remember that we were always supposed to check for GCF. Now, I didn't ever say it on these right here, but really we should have been checking. And in all of these examples we've done so far, there was not a GCF for all three terms. There wasn't anything that all three of them had in common. These two had X's, but he didn't. This one didn't have any numbers. So here we go, this one right here. I do have a two in common for the whole thing. All three of these terms are divisible by the number of two. So when I pull that two out, remember that I'm dividing it out. Pump some space here. Remember that when I factor out, I'm dividing out that single two, which would give me the two parentheses, x squared minus two x minus eight. On square root, it divided by two. Now, when this happens, when there's a GCF, it's a super common mistake to leave that off your final answer, to get focused on breaking down the rest of it and forget that GCF. So my recommendation is as soon as you see this happening, on XYZ, go type in the print in the answer box two parentheses. So it's there waiting on you so you don't forget. If you were taking a test on paper, I would put a big circle near the end of the problem and put two parentheses so I don't forget. And then as I work the rest of the problem, I'll come fill the rest of this in. But don't forget it. Put it in your answer box right away so you don't forget it. So it's super easy to do. Even I do it sometimes. So in your answer box, put that two parentheses. Okay, now we have to factor out the rest of this polynomial right here, this trinomial. So I'm going to tic-tac-toe for the last part of it. My middle one is that x squared. My last one is the minus 8. And I want things that multiply to negative 8, but combine to make a negative 2. To make an 8 would just be 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. A negative would have one of each sign, one positive, one negative. Since the middle is negative, that tells me the bigger number would be the negative. So this, of course, would make a negative 7. It's not what I want. This one would make that negative 2. So I need a 2x and a minus 4x. Okay, remember, I never use this one. These have an x in common. These are both divisible by 2, but the closest box is positive. These have the x in common. These are both divisible by 4, and the closest box has the negative. So that would give me x plus 2 and x minus 4. So see how easy it would be to think that's the final answer? Forgetting all about this 2 right here. So the final answer should be 2, x plus 2, x minus 4. Don't forget that too, super easy to do. Okay, so that leads us into the next ones that do have the sneaky number in front. So we have to be extra careful. So on this one right here, I see a lot's going on. I wanna see if I can pull anything out and luckily I can. All three of these are divisible by two. What happens is this one has the extra letter B, but don't panic, we got this. So first off, they have the letter two in common there's not anything that all three of them have in common for letters. So it's just the two. So that's gonna leave me the x squared. Place on the paper here. The 16xb. And then the one, 64, 
b squared. Here's that too, it would be easy to forget. Type it straight in your answer box. Two parentheses, don't forget it. All right, now it might seem tricky on this one here. Got a 64, but we got this. Don't worry about those big numbers. You just gotta be systematic. Okay, x squared in the middle, 64b squared in the end right here. I gotta find these two boxes to see what combined to make this work out. Okay, so in the back I have a 64, it's positive. In the middle I have a minus 16. Since this is positive, that means that they had the same sign. Either it was positive times positive, or it was negative times negative, because negative times negative is still positive. Since the combined can make a negative, I'm guessing it was probably the negative. Okay, you might be able to guess off the top of your head what would make this, but even if we couldn't, I could be systematic, systematic and go down the line that it was either 164, 232, uh, 64 is not divisible by 3, but it is 4 times, 64 divided by 4 is 16, it's not divisible by 5, 6, 7, but it is divisible by 8, and there it is negative 8 and negative 8 would multiply to positive 64 and combine to be a negative 16. So here's what made this one be a little bit different. The middle term right here was not just 16x like the others, it was 16xb. So I needed those, sorry not 16, to combine to make xb. So this right here would be minus 8xb and minus 8 B. Sorry, I didn't leave myself in a room. X, B for both of those. See if I can fix that a little bit. So I needed both of them to have an X, B. Because remember, these two combined to make this negative 16 right here. And that's why I like these little boxes, because it makes these special cases work themselves out. So now I can see that these front two had an x in common, just like usual. But these back ones, while being divisible by the number 8, they also share the letter b. So they're divisible by 8, and they both have a letter b. Now this sign closest to it right here was a negative, so it's going to be a negative. On the middle row, they both had the letter x. And on the bottom, the same story. They're both divisible by an 8, and they both have a letter B. The box closest to it right here is a negative, so it's going to be a negative. And now the final answer is just that. So I've got the X minus 8B and another X minus 8B. So notice it did not cancel out. That difference of squares is the only way the middle terms cancel. This one was a perfect square, it didn't cancel. So that means another way that I could write the same answer would have been two x minus eight b squared. But either way, these are both acceptable answers. All right, so this one right here, I've got a two in the front but I look and this one is not divisible by two. I can't factor it out like the last two problems we just did. So I'm gonna start up my tic-tac-toe board. I never use this one. My middle guy right here is the two X squared. My back guy is the minus six. And right here when I start my chart, I have to do an A times C. I call it the AC method because A being just whatever's next to the squared term is going to get multiplied by C the constant. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. So I look for things that multiply not just 6 but 12, negative 12. So I still want the middle guy understood 1, but I need things that multiply to a negative 12. So that could, of course, be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. Since it's a negative, I would have one of each sign, a positive and a negative. Since this is positive, my bigger number would be the positive. 
here it is, so a negative 3 and a positive 4. So I need a negative 3x and a positive 4x, and now I go through. So for the first time right here, they don't just have an x in common. They have a 2x in common. Both of these are divisible by a 2, and they both share an x. These are both divisible by 3, and the closest box right here has a negative. These don't have any numbers in common, but they're both divisible by an x. Two and three are not divisible by the same number other than a one. And these are both divisible by two. And the closest box right here is positive, so it's positive. So the answer would be x plus two from this right here. Sorry, maybe consistent. I usually put the other one first. The two x minus three. and the x plus 2. Okay. Let's try it again. I'll make my tic-tac-toe back here. Okay, I'm use this one. The front guy goes here. The back guy goes here. And these two that I'm working on. So remember, I need to multiply. So I go 2 times negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. I need things that are going to multiply to negative 6. Oops. Multiply to negative 6 and add to the negative 5. Remember, those 6s are sneaky. Be careful. So I have 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. But just like last time, the negative 2, negative 3 would make a positive 6. So I need the positive 1, negative 6 to get a product of negative 6 and combine to make a negative 5. Positive 1x, negative 6x. Okay, it doesn't matter which box you put them in. It works itself out either way. So when I look at this one, Again, they have not just the x in common, they're both divisible by the number two. Closest box is positive, so it's positive. These right here actually don't have anything in common other than just they're both divisible by one. I need something in the box, so I put the one. These both have an x in common. These are both divisible by three, and the closest box is negative. And that's it. So I've got 2x plus 1 and x minus 3. Okay. It looks like I might be able to factor something out, but 19 is not divisible by 4. So I go to my AC method. I'm going to draw my little tic tac toe board. So you can kind of see why, even though it seemed unnecessary for those easier ones, as things get trickier, it can be handy. Just line out your thoughts. Here's that front guy. Here's the back guy. I never use this one. I need these guys. So I'm looking for things that multiply not to 12. Be careful. AC. 4 times 12 is 48. I know it's big, but we got this would be a positive 48. Lots of things multiply to 48, but you could just systematically list them. 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, I ran out of room, and 6 and 8. That's not as bad as it seemed. So then I know I'm done because it doesn't divide by 7. Divided by 8 gives me back the 6. And these are the only higher numbers that would work. So the ones that would combine to make a negative 19 means they must both be negatives. This being a positive says they have the same sign. This says those two same signs would be negative. To make a negative 19 through, it wouldn't be this, that'd be 49. That would be... 26. This one would be 19. Here it is. Minus 3 and minus 16 make minus 19. So I have minus 3x. 
to minus 16x. My middle column right here, they're both divisible by a 4, and they both have a letter x. These two are both divisible by 3, and the closest one right here is a negative. These both have a letter x in common. Be careful right here, they're both even, but the biggest number I could pull out of both is a 4. And the closest box right here has a negative. And that'd be it, 4x minus 3 and x minus 4. Okay, one more like that. Now this one right here, I've got really big numbers. If I take the 90 times 80, it gets really big. But remember that first step was to always check for GCF. None of those other ones I could pull out of GCF, but luckily all three of these are divisible by 10. So I can pull a 10 out of all three. Okay, so when I pull that 10 out, that would leave me with 9x squared plus 6x minus 8. Okay. So that 10 right there is that one that's easy to forget. So go ahead and put him in your answer box so you don't forget. To get the rest of it, we're going to tic-tac-toe and do it over here. And the first guy goes in the middle, tic-tac-toe here. Negative 8 goes back here. And we're going to make our little chart. So 9 times negative 8 is negative 72. Negative 72 and a positive 6. Let's go through our list. 72 is either 1 and 72. 2 and 36, 3 and 24, 4 and 18, so 4. Uh, it's not divisible by 5, 6 and 12, or 8 and 9. Right in Okay. This is a negative, which means they'd have opposite signs, one positive, one negative. Since this is a positive, it means the bigger of the two numbers would be the positive, and the smaller would be the negative. And which one of these pairs makes a positive 6? These right here. So I have a negative 6x and a positive 12x. These two are divisible by the number 3, and they both share an x. These two are both divisible by the number 2, and the closest one is a negative. These two are also both divisible by the number 3 and share an x. And these two right here are divisible by a 4, and the closest one is positive. And that'd be it. So remember, we can't forget that 10 that we factored out from the beginning. And then we have the 3x minus 2 and 3x plus 4. And that's the trickiest one of the bunch. So if you can do that one, you can do anything. So the question on everyone's mind right now is usually, but why? Why would we need to break them back apart instead of boiling them together? And it's because of the zero factor property. So when we're asked to solve a quadratic, like we did in chapter four right here, we sometimes are able to isolate the square and then square root both sides, but that doesn't always work. If I were to ask you to solve something like this right here in black equal to zero, you couldn't isolate the square because I have an x squared here and a single x there. So the only way to solve a problem like that is by using the zero factor property which says that if you knew that you multiplied two things together and got an answer of zero, then either the first guy was a zero, the second guy was a zero, or they were both zeros. So anything times zero is zero. So if your answer was zero, one or both of them was a zero. The only way it could have worked. So we try to break things down into their factors so that we can set each factor equal to zero. Because if one of them was equal to zero, 
it wouldn't matter what the other one was. Anything times zero is zero. So let's try it out. So in these last few problems here, we're going to factor and then we're going to set it to zero. So on this one right here, we actually could have done it the same way we did back in chapter four. So let's do it that way first. If I added the one over, I would have gotten the y squared was equal to one. And then I could have used my square root principle to see that my y should be plus or minus the square root of one is just one. So my two answers were either one or negative one. Okay. On this one right here, I also could have done it that way. I could have isolated the square because there's only one square there. So I could have added the 10 and then divided by two. And then I would have gotten an uneven square root of five. That's okay. So my two answers would have been positive the square root of five or negative square root of five. And those worked out because we just had one single x. But when I have something like this, we can't isolate the x. So when we have these, we have to factor it out and then set each of those factors to zero. So they started us out here with one that's already factored. So in this one right here, they have factors. We have a single r back here, the r minus two and the r minus eight. So if any one of these three things was equal to zero, then zero times the others would have still been zero. So that means my answers are either the single r right here was equal to zero, or the r minus two was equal to zero, or the r minus eight was equal to zero. Let's go see which numbers make that happen. Well, this one's already solved. That means if r was a zero itself, zero times this stuff would be zero. This one I would just have to add the two over to see that if an r was equal to two, this one would have been zero and zero times anything is zero. Last on this one, if I factored, or it's already factored, if I solved it and got the eight, and that means that an eight plugged in would make this product equal zero. Those are my three answers. Okay. Now let's try factoring ourselves. So this one up here, if I did it the factor way instead, I see I have the two terms and there's nothing in common, no GCF, so it must be that difference of squares. So here we go. So I would break it apart. Where my front guy is the y, because y squared is y. My back guy is a one, because so one times one is one, one squared is one, the so one plus and one minus. Then I would set each of these factors equal to zero and solve them to get the exact same answers I did back here of a negative one and a positive one. It's exactly the same. What this means is that if you graph this equation right here on your graphing calculator and saw where it crossed the x-axis where, where it was equal to zero, the whole function was equal to zero, the y value was zero, we would have seen it cross right there at the negative one and positive one. Don't worry, this is actually a different one. This one right here, we graph 2x squared minus 10. And we saw it cross right here at exactly the decimal for the square root of five and negative square root of five. So sometimes you can utilize your calculator and solve it that way, but it's never going to give you an exact square root like this. So that's why we need these other methods. So on this one, my first chore is to factor it. So it's tic-tac-toe. Don't worry, after you get past the bigger factorings, they give you mostly easy problems. So this one, if I wanted to break down a 16, I would have one 16 or two and eight or four and four. And the two and eight are the ones that make 10. I would need them to be a negative. 
negative two and negative eight. Okay, these two share an x. These are both divisible by two. We have a negative in the box closest. These two share an x. These are both divisible by eight, and this one is closest with a negative. So that means my x minus two is a factor, which may be equal to zero. My x minus eight is the other factor, which may be equal to zero, which means my two answers are positive two or positive eight. Now zero is a magical number. It's the only one that works like that where anything times zero is zero. I couldn't say that anything times three is three because three times five is 15, not three. So these only work if we get them equal to zero. So the first step is to make sure that it is equal to zero. So the first thing I would do is move this three over by subtracting to give us the two x squared minus x minus three equals zero then I can do my tic-tac-toe. So my 2x squared, my minus 3. Don't forget to do your a times c, so I'm looking for things that multiply to a negative 6, 2 times negative 3, and combine to make a negative 1. So that would give me 1 times 6, or 2 times 3, to make a negative six, I would need one positive, one negative. If it's a negative solution, the larger number would be the negative. So positive two x, negative three x. These two only share an x. These two don't have anything in common, so it'd just be a one, be a positive one, because he's positive. These two both have a two x in common. These both have a three in common, and it would be negative because he's negative. So that means either x plus one equals zero or two x minus three equals zero. This one would give me an answer of just negative one. This one I do have two steps, but it's okay. Add the three and then divide by two. For the last answer of three halves, which is shown in the graph right above. So if you graphed it out, you would see this equation right here, right here, hit the x-axis where the y is zero at negative one and three halves. All right, we're almost there. Okay, this one's already equal to zero. I don't have to do my tic-tac-toe because it's only two terms. That's not the difference of squares, but they do have an A in common. So if I factor out that A from both of these terms, that would give me an A from this one plus three from that one, which means it's just like that red one right above where I have a single A right here, where that single A might have been equal to zero. Zero squared plus three times zero would indeed make zero or the a plus three equals zero, which means the other number might have been a negative three. So the answers were either zero itself or negative three. Remember that zero is a number. It's not undefined. It's just the number zero. Now this one's all smushed around, so we have to get it equal to zero first. I can move either direction. I usually like to move to the left, even though it's two different subtractions. Okay, now when I rewrite it, I am going to put it in order. So I write 12y squared and then the minus 5y and then the minus 2 because it's easier when it's in order. There's no GCF, which means I've got to do this stuff. So I'm going to do my AC method where 12 times 2 times negative 2 is a negative 24. So I need things that multiply to negative 24, but combine to make a negative 5. Could be 1 and 24, 
2 and 12, 3 and 8, or 4 and 6. So the ones that multiply to a negative would have opposite signs. If the result was negative, the larger of the two numbers would have been the negative. So here they are. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. 3 minus 8 is negative 5. Okay, so that's what I need for my tic-tac-toe here. Here's my 12y squared. Here's my 3y, sorry, not x this time, minus 8y, and then the minus 2. Okay, can't go, it's minus 2, not 24. It was just these boxes. Negative 8 plus 3 made minus 5. So I'm just factoring these out. These share a 4 and a y, positive because he's positive. These only share a 1, positive because he's positive. These share a 3 and a y, positive because he's positive. These share a 2, negative because he's negative. So either 4y plus 1 was equal to 0, or 3y minus 2 was equal to 0. Almost done. We just have to finish by solving this little bitty algebra problem. So that would be the fraction. Be careful. It's tempting to divide by the 1, but we need to divide by the 4. You see that one of the answers of the fraction negative 1 fourth. And the other one is the fraction 2 thirds. Last one, word problem. Don't freak out. We got this. Okay, the best kind of word problem is like this right here, where it says blah, 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 but then it gives you the equation. So right here it says, here's the equation, and then it gives us a number. We just have to know, is that the number for x? We plug that into x. Or for c, it says find x. We don't know x. If the total cost is 1,600. So 1,600 must be the c. So let's put that in place for the c right there. 200 plus 900x minus 100x squared. Okay, we need it equal to zero first. We can move it either way. I usually like to move left, but it's a little much easier to move right this time. Let's do it. And then I am going to write it in order. So I do have my zero. Over here, I'm going to put that negative 100x squared first. Okay, remember the sign belongs to the number behind it. Then I'm going to put my 900x. And then last, 200 minus 1600, those were the like terms, give me negative 1400. Okay, there's some big numbers, but don't freak out, don't panic, because they are luckily all divisible by 100. Okay, so you pull out that 100. You could pull out a negative 100. That would make life a little bit easier. Since this is a negative, let's go ahead and do that. It's gonna make life a little bit easier. I'm gonna put my negative 100 over here to the side. That would leave me with a positive x squared minus 9x, watch those signs, plus 14. Much easier to factor. That's still equal to zero. So we're almost done, we just gotta think what multiplies to 14 and combines to make a nine. So it must be the two and the seven. It was a negative nine, so it would need to be a negative two and a negative seven. Let's fill in our tic-tac-toe. So that was the x squared, the negative two x, the negative seven x, and the 14. These share an x, these share a 2, negative because he's negative. These share an x. These share a 7, negative because he's negative. So either the x minus 2 was equal to 0, or the x minus 7 was equal to 0. And you may be asking yourself, what about this guy that we factored out? We could set him to 0. You would see that that doesn't actually give us a solution. That one was just a constant, just a number. So there wasn't anything to solve. Negative 100 isn't zero, so we're done with that. So this one we add the two, this one we add the seven, 
you'll see that the two numbers that would make this happen are either 2 or 7. And we're done. And that is all of Chapter 5, finishing up our intermediate algebra material. Please remember that you can ask me questions anytime. Remember that there are other ways that you can factor. If you didn't like the tic-tac-toe method the best, that's okay. You can look up some YouTube videos of other people's methods. If you like something that works better, just go for it. I'm never going to count you off for the method that you use. Let me know anything I can do.